What's really important to note about this question is that as this band cools from a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius, it's going to contract. And as it contracts, it's going to fit ever more snugly against the surface of the tooth. And so what happens is a tension develops within the band and it is our job to determine that tension. And in order to do that, we have to revisit a couple of principles from an earlier chapter. One of those principles is that the stress that is exerted is equal to an elastic modulus multiplied by a strain. Now there's a lot of vocabulary here, so let's unpack that. The elastic modulus is actually, in this question, given to us as the Young's modulus, and that is often symbolized by the letter Y. So we do have that value. And then strain was a term that was defined, again, in a previous chapter, and it says it is defined as the ratio of the change in length, delta L, to the original length L naught. So we know that this strain quantity right here can be rewritten as a change in length divided by the original length. So what we're going to do is take these ideas and rewrite an equation for stress. And this is going to be the stress that is developing within the band itself. And we know again this is the elastic modulus Y multiplied by the change in length divided by the original length. Now in this chapter, we have learned that the change in length can be calculated based on a temperature change. So as things get warmer, they expand, and as they cool down, they contract, and we can calculate that change in length. And it's based on a change in temperature, and we know that it is given by this expression right here. So we have a coefficient of linear expansion multiplied by the original length multiplied by the change in temperature. We're going to substitute this expression in for the change in length. So now we can write stress is equal to the Young's modulus multiplied by alpha times the original length times the change in temperature, and this is still divided by the original length. Now what's convenient here is the original length will actually algebraically cancel out. So we're left with a very handy equation that's going to allow us to calculate the stress that is developing within the band. It's going to be the Young's modulus times the coefficient of linear expansion times the temperature change. So what we're going to do next is plug in the given values. So the Young's modulus was given in the question. It was 18 times 10 to the power of 10. We can revisit the unit. It is given to us in Newtons per meters squared. So we'll fill that in accordingly. Then we're going to multiply that by the given value for the coefficient of linear expansion. And that was given as 17.3 times 10 to the negative 6 inverse degrees Celsius. So we'll fill that in accordingly. And then finally, what we're going to need is the temperature change. And the temperature had changed from 80 degrees down to 37 degrees. And technically, when you do a temperature change, you have to do the final value minus the initial value. If we do this, we're going to get a negative result. And that just shows us that as it cools, there's going to be a contraction within that metallic band. We don't really want a negative answer here, so we're just going to take the absolute value just so we know the magnitude of the stress developed in that metallic band. So we multiply this all out and we get a very large number. It's 1339020000 is going to be the stress. Now let's look at the dimensions here so we understand what this quantity really represents. We have degrees Celsius inverse here, and then you have degrees Celsius in this unit. When you multiply, those actually cancel out. So you're going to be left with Newtons per meter squared. So this suggests that there's a certain amount of force being exerted on the band by the tooth, frankly, for every meter squared of the band. We still need to figure out that force. This is not the force. This is the force per meter squared. So the next step in this problem is to actually figure out the area that this pressure is being exerted against. Now, we know from the question that we have essentially a band whose thickness, I believe, was half of a millimeter. Let's go back and double check. Yeah, it was a thickness of half of a millimeter and a height of four millimeters. So if we want to imagine a sort of rectangular shape here, this dimension would be half of a millimeter. And then this here is four millimeters. 
So we can easily calculate the area against which this stress is being exerted because the area is just that width times that length. So we're going to do so. Just make sure that you convert into standard units of meters. So we're going to take the half of a millimeter, multiply that by 10 to the power of negative three. This gets us into meters and then do the same thing with the four millimeters, multiply it by 10 to the negative three to get it into meters. So let's multiply this out. And when we do so, we will see that the area is two times 10 to the negative six meters squared. So think about how you'd want to combine these numbers now. You know how many newtons per meter squared is being exerted, and now you know how many meters squared that that pressure is being exerted upon. You probably realize that we can figure out the final answer, the force, by multiplying those numbers. We're going to take the stress, which is essentially in units of newtons per meter squared, and then multiply that by the area which is in meters squared. And when we multiply those together, the meter squares will cancel. This will give us the Newtons. This will be the amount of tension within that metallic band as it's squeezed against the tooth. So let's take that really big number we got from the first part of the question and then multiply it by this area. And when you crunch that down, you're going to get about 268. And this, as we said, will come out Newtons that is the final answer to this question.